Hello, welcome my frazzled little physics students. And this time we're going to be looking at the physics of forces concerning friction. All right, so um, in a lot of the other videos and as we've been analyzing forces in the past, we've been looking at, um, you know, just, just analyzing the forces um, and not at all taking into account friction. And so friction is always going to be there. Um, so no matter what you're doing, um, you're going to have something pushing up against um, your moving object in one way or another. So, so now all of our problems and equations are going to have to analyze and include um, all those opposite forces caused by friction. And friction is always an opposite force to your, to your, um, to your whatever force you have. So say you're pushing a box along, a gra along the ground. Okay? Friction is going to push back on that box. Um, and so, so, for example, if you were to shove this box, it would eventually slow down on its own. And why? Because it has an opposite acceleration force caused by friction pushing it back. So there's, there's two factors that cause friction. Two factors. And those factors are, um, one, the, um, the mass of the object. So basically how heavy it is. And so um, the more weight that is pushing down on it, right, um, the more weight is pushing back on it. And so then that's going to cause the contact between these two objects to be greater. And so, so essentially um, this is going to be mass times the force of gravity, right? And so that equals the uh, force normal. And that, that's what we're looking at um, as the main thing that we're going to be analyzing when it comes to friction. So the heavier the object is, the greater the force normal will be. And this should make sense. This is pretty intuitive. Like the amount of friction is going to change um, with the increased force caused by the mass pushing down. And the greater you have contact here, the greater friction you're going to have. And then the second is just the material. So if I have, um, if I have ice and then I have, uh, you know, rubber, there's going to be a totally different amount of friction. That rubber is going to grab onto my object way more tightly than the ice will. And so there's going to be a higher amount of friction. So, so the material um, in contact, we could just say in contact here. Okay. So, so then there's also, when we have, when we have friction, there's also um, two different kinds of friction, essentially. So um, when, I, when I first go to push on this object right here, okay, there's a friction that is there initially with the object not moving. And you have to shove it, and you have to give it kind of an extra shove force to sort of break that initial friction. And then it starts moving. And once it starts moving, there's a continuous friction that moves past it. And so these two types of friction are called static and kinetic. And this should make sense to you because you can understand kinetic is in motion, static is not. And so static means stays, stays the same, stays the pla in, in place. And so like we said earlier, the two factors that, come in, that, that cause or that we need to, to calculate for friction are mass, which is force normal, times the force of gravity. Um, and uh, the material that it's in contact with. Now, um, one thing that, that you, would, you might think is, is if I have a box like this with a surface area like this, and I have a box with a surface area like this, well, this is coming in contact with more of the floor, so that's going to increase the amount of friction, right? Well, that's not exactly the way that it works, and experiments have shown over and over again that the actual amount of friction doesn't change um, because of the surface area. And I know that, you know, at first you would think that that is not the way it is, but, um, but it is. And experiments show over and over again that the surface area is not a factor. So all you need to know is your force normal and the material that you're in contact with. All right, so when we're looking at um, static friction, so static friction is um, going to equal, and we'd, we'd say it like this, so the force of um, friction static force of friction static is going to equal actually this one is not going to equal it's going to have to be less than or equal to this is a coefficient of static friction 
times the force normal. Now let me explain this equation for you real quick. So, um, so how does this equation work? Um, when you're pushing on an object, right, you have to overcome this static friction to get it moving. Now, once it's moving, you're into kinetic friction. So kinetic friction, the force of friction kinetic, all right, is going to equal the um, coefficient of kinetic friction times the force normal, all right? So, um, so, so the point is that as soon as this is um, equal, as soon as the static friction um, is uh, the actual friction force is equal to um, this times this, that's the point where it's going to start moving. And so once it starts moving, now we've transitioned into kinetic friction, right? So, so static friction will be everything, every force on the object, right? So say this is my object right here. Every force on the object up until the point it starts moving. So that's why it's less than or equal. So your, your static friction force, you know, you could push on the box and it doesn't move. And so then that's going to be a less than, right? And, but that's still force friction static because it doesn't move. So as long as there's a force applied and it's not moving, there's static friction. And as soon as it starts moving, we have um, kinetic friction. All right, so then let's look at this little symbol right here, this whole little coefficient idea. So the coefficient is what takes into account the material in contact. So like we said earlier, um, if you have, you know, sandpaper, right, if you have a sandpaper surface, and uh, you know it's going to be like a gritty little surface like that then you have a smooth ice surface the the friction on the ice surface is going to be way less than the sandpaper surface right and so the material in contact is calculated with this coefficient of static or coefficient of kinetic now every single material has its own separate coefficient right because every single material is going to um, exert a different sort of frictional force on the object and if you're looking in your book, table 5-1 on page 129 is going to have a list of, of things. Um, like, for example, rubber on dry con on concrete has a static friction of 0 0.80, right? So that's its coefficient right there. Um, if we were to look at, um, say, steel on steel with oil, so like uh, this is kind of the idea of what's the friction like within an engine. So an engine has steel on steel with oil moving on, and that's going to be 0.15. So you can see that the, the kinetic or the, uh, the static friction of the steel on steel with oil is going to be way less than um, like the rubber on dry concrete, okay? Um, and so rubber on dry concrete would, would be what our tires would use, right? Because we want to have really strong static friction because we want that not to slip. And then inside the car engine, when those parts are moving against each other, we have steel on steel with oil. And so we want that to be as low as possible. So these are our coefficients. And that takes the um, material, the contact material. And this is either a number you look up on a chart or a number that you calculate because you know these two bits right here. All right, so in the next couple of videos, I'll do a couple of practice problems showing how to figure out um, your forces and your kinetic friction force or your static friction force or your coefficients.